There are several decent videos and articles out there on the subject of red versus white oak, but most of them are focused on flooring or they're full of information that isn't really relevant to woodworkers who may just want to build a bookshelf or an end table or even an outdoor project. So I thought I'd make this short woodworker focus primer on the sometimes confusing differences between the two types of wood and how to choose the right one for your next project. First of all, there are hundreds of species of oak. Red and white are the two main groups into which all the different species are divided. English oak, for example, is in the white oak family. California black oak is in the red oak family. So if you go to the lumber yard and you ask for red oak, you aren't asking for a specific species of lumber, but a whole family. That's an important point that can affect your projects. When you have different species called by the same name, you're bound to have inconsistencies. Some white oak can look pretty red, and some red oak can look fairly pale. The name has little to do with the color of the wood. The reason for their respective names are often debated, and it seems to depend on who you ask. But red oaks often have reddish brown leaf buds or leaves that turn red in autumn. White oak trees often have lighter colored bark, and the leaves may have lighter undersides. There are other differences too, including the shape of the leaves and the acorns and other things, but this isn't a tree tutorial, it's a lumber tutorial. And the most obvious difference between red and white oak, as far as woodworkers are concerned, are the pores. Red oak features open pores that look like bundles of straws. You can put a stick of red oak in a glass of water and blow bubbles through it, as my friend Jim Heavey did here. The pores in white oak, on the other hand, are filled up with resin. This makes white oak more dense and a little heavier, too. On the surface, white oak is more likely to show its medullary rays when it's quarter sawn. You see these distinctive patterns in craftsmen or arts and crafts style furniture, which is usually made from white oak. But red oak can feature rays as well. In fact, you can easily mistake red oak for white oak depending on which specific species within the family that the board came from. So the best way to tell the difference is to just look at the pores on the end grain. So what does this mean for woodworkers? For one thing, if you wish to build a relatively inexpensive but really durable outdoor project, white oak is a good choice because those closed pores keep out moisture and resist rot. If you wish to build a relatively inexpensive and really durable indoor project, either species is a good choice, but red oak seems to be more abundant and less expensive, at least where I live. Both red and white oak are very hard woods, but white oak is more dense and it seems to dull my tools faster. I also think white oak gives the nastiest splinters, one of which I'm still trying to get out of my finger. As I said, you cannot look at the board and say, it seems pretty red, it must be red oak, or vice versa. And since there are a lot of variety in color within both groups, you should buy all the lumber you need and a little extra for the project from a single source in a single visit, because the next batch may not look the same. In the Midwest, most of the red oak we get comes from species that are pretty red. And since I don't want everything I build to look like it belongs in a Cracker Barrel restaurant, I tend to seek out white oak. It's not difficult to find at hardwood dealers, and it's usually only a little more expensive. But I don't assume it's going to have that nice creamy color I desire. That depends on the species. In fact, I've often used these similarities in colors to my advantage by mixing red and white oak together. These bookcases featured solid white oak on the visible sides and the edges of the shelves, but I wanted to make the shelf panels themselves from plywood for greater stability and cost savings. While I can buy red oak plywood off the rack at the home center, white oak plywood is a special order item that costs as much as three times the price. So I paired the solid white oak that I had on hand with red oak plywood from the home center, and the only reason you can see the difference is because I told you about it. The bottom line is both red and white oak are good choices for indoor projects and white oak is a good choice for outdoors as well. But the color may vary, so keep that in mind. See you next time. It's just a couple of cuts. Your ears will be fine, right? They will be if you have your Isotunes Bluetooth earbuds in because you'd already have your ANSI certified hearing protection on because you're listening to your favorite music and podcasts. 
and you're supporting a small family business at the same time, please use the link below this video to learn more and to show them you support what we do as well.